Okay, those of you who are here the first time, here's a little bit about me. I'm a Microsoft MVP. Um, there's my book, uh, 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 Coding Standards. Um, please buy a copy. I have some flyers down here. I don't have any copies here. Sorry, I'm all out. But please buy a copy online. I also have a website, donettips.com. Uh, um, 700 plus tips, tricks, and articles. If you want to find out about .NET News or hard, I'd like to focus on tips that are really hard to find, uh, please go up there. Um, I have an open source project, which I'll be talking about later because this whole system is wrapped around my open source project. I also run this group, so I don't need to talk much about that. And uh, I also teach at UCSD. I have uh, a class going on right now, Fundamentals of the .NET Framework, which I bribe some of my students here to come. So here's what we're going to learn about today. Uh, we're going to talk about logging exceptions and events uh, in .NET, which is really super important uh, during run, the runtime of your application. Because once your applications go, go out into the world, onto servers, uh, you really need to know what's going on during runtime to uh, uh, fix bugs and things like that. So uh, the way we do this uh, now, I think these started in .NET 2.0, is we use .NET trace listeners. So first we're going to talk about what comes out of the box in .NET for trace listeners. And then we're going to talk about um, creating custom trace listeners and talk a little bit about the issues with the trace listeners that come out of the box in .NET. And then we're going to talk about my open source project and talk about the enhanced listeners that I've created that fixes the issues with the .NET trace listeners. <laughs> And then we're going to talk about some custom trace listeners I've written, uh, which allows you to do things like email um, exceptions to you and things like that, which .NET uh, doesn't come out of the box. And then we're going to talk about something I've talked about here before, but I keep, re keep revamping um, every time there's a new version of .NET, is my centralized exception and logging handling system. So logging to a, logging to a single machine is great, but how about when you're in an enterprise, right? Logging to a single machine doesn't work very well. You need to log to a central machine. So uh, developers and or like at where I work, uh, tech support people can see all the errors at one place and do something about it. Especially when we get calls from customers. They say, hey, our stuff's not working. They can go to a central place and go, oh, okay, now we see why. And they call up a developer. So logging exceptions and events, why do we need to? So I want to ask you, those of you who do program now in .NET, why do you need to log exceptions or events in your program during runtime? Nobody logs? Yes, sir. Because of the users. <laughs> because of the users. That's totally correct. Because, as my students know, a user is what? Four-letter word. Right, exactly. But why? Can you be a little more specific? Exactly. You don't know what kind of information they're putting in. Or what, more specifically, what we didn't anticipate or what we should have anticipated. For example, um, during um, our uh, QA cycle before we released version 1 of our product on December 1st, guess what one of our probably more junior programmers forgot to, to think about when someone's putting in their last name? Come on, you SQL guys. You should know this. Apostrophe, exactly. <laughs> what do you have to do to the apostrophe? You have to double it. So guess what was coming through my exception logs? The exception about that exact thing. So there you go. Any other reason? No? And you guys are going to learn a lot if you're not doing logging. Bobby, do you guys do logging? Looking at performance, right? Yeah, we do that. Anything else? So the state and performance. Anything else? Bots hitting the website and they tend to crawl. Oh, so you want to know about bots hitting your website. So uh, the big thing is, is most of you should know, hopefully, that you know, all those debugging statements you put in your code goes away during the release build, right? They're only there during the de debugging builds and while you're running Visual Studio. But you know, as soon as you go to release, they're gone, which is, is the way it's supposed to go, right? So what? So we need something. We need a way to tell what's going on in our applications during runtime in production, 
right? And not only to log exceptions, but to log what's going on in the application. Like you might want to log every <coughs> half hour how much memory your application's using, right? Something like that. And we especially need to log ex exceptions for evaluation by support and development teams. Every day, well, almost every day, I go onto our production servers and I look at our logs. I want to see what's coming through. I found a couple good ones today that I don't think anybody's addressing at this point. So, and they're nasty ones. And also, there's other information you want to, might want to log. We already talked about maybe how much um, memory your, inf your application's eating up. Um, there's other events that I log, like every time our, webs our website goes up and down, you know, uh, we log that to see how often it's being, you know, being shut off and turned on, um, things like that. I'll tell you some more things as we get down into uh, uh, further down on down the line. So those of you, it only it seems like a couple of you do logging. What methods do you use now, Bobby? Database. You log to a database, but how? Does you did you write your custom? Custom code, and you log to a database. Okay. Anybody else? How do you log things? Log for net. Hmm? Log for net? Okay. And what is that log to? File log. A file log? Like XML or just a flat file? Flat file. Okay. So you write, wrote your own custom, wrote, goes to a text file. Okay. Anybody else? You write to the event log, okay? That's the most common, you know, because that's what we've had forever, and that's what a lot of administrators like, hopefully. Anything else? No? Okay. So the event log is what we've been using forever in Windows, right? Um, very easy to use. Um, they automatically clear themselves out in the later versions of Windows Server. Um, can't put a ton of information. There's a limited amount of information you can put in an event log, um, as far as a single event, you know, a, a single log. But um, you can do that. You can use custom text files. As some of you are doing um, custom XML files. I know uh, some people at Code Camps that they use those. Uh, database. Bobby said that. Right. Databases are good. I like using. And we'll talk later about a combination because how with databases down. I like to have a backup of like a file and or the event log, right? So there's lots of ways to log. And I probably have done all these in the past. But the new .NET solution that I really like and what my whole system is now based off of, because it's really easy to use this, is .NET trace listeners. They're easy to use from any .NET application, including ASP.NET. Because if you have you guys used your uh, file logging from ASP.NET, doesn't work unless you go and specifically path it to a folder that you've given access to that that user that is coming across in on, right? Doesn't work very well. But some of these uh, tra these file based trace listeners in ASP.NET, including um, the event trace listener, work. You don't have to do anything special. Oh, I'm sorry, the event trace listener works without you doing anything special in uh, ASP.NET. They're extremely configurable, which I'll show you some of that tonight. I'm not going to go into great detail, but I'll show you some of it. And it's easy to write your own trace listeners or make the current trace listeners better, which I'm going to show you. So let's talk a little bit about the tra the .NET trace listeners. Um, write um, messages about the execution of your cap application at runtime. We kind of talked about that already. There's three phases of using uh, trace listeners. The first phase, of course, is instrumentation. You can add trace code. You have to add the tracing code to your application. And then the tracing itself happens um, when the trace code is hit. You know, usually you write this in where you have your exception handling, things like that. And the tracing is, in, is then written to the trace listeners, which we're going to talk about here in a second. And then, of course, the last part is analysis. I just told you about that. Every day I go up onto the servers and I look at the trace logs and seeing what's going on. So the output, the cool thing about trace listeners 
is the output is written to one to many listeners. So you can have many listeners running at one time, as many as you want, or none. So that's one of the cool things about trace listeners, is you can have all this instrumentated into your program, but have it completely turned off. And I've done this at uh, where I used to work, and someone would call me from Austin and said, hey, Dave, something's going on. And I go, okay. I get on a server. I'd make a configuration file change in my web app, and I'd turn the trace listeners on, and I'd call them back, and I'd go, okay, did go do what you just did. And they'd do it, and I'd look at the output, and I'd go, okay, I see exactly what happened. And then I'd go and turn it back off. That way, it wasn't constantly running and, you know, minutely, you know, a, a performance hit on my app. So that's a cool thing. You can have zero to many listeners running. The output methods that you'll use, I'm going to show you in the first demo, um, are assert, fail, write, uh, write if, uh, write line, and write line if. The main two, and I'm going to show you in the demo, are write. I think I'm you know, just using write line in the demo. The main, uh, main ones we use are write and write line. So very easy to use, as you'll see, to write not only um, just text information, but exceptions too. So out of the box .net trace listeners. We have the uh, text writer trace listener, writes to a uh, text writer or a stream class, uh, basically just a regular text file. Yep. So what is a trace listener? It's a, it's a class in .net, and you'll see, you'll see when we get to the custom part that um, is set up by the configuration. We're going, to, we're going to show you configuration here in a second that's automatically loaded if you have it turned on and is listening to these events and then outputting to whatever output that listener is set up to do. Does that make sense? So you have the event log, of course, writes to the event log, and like I, I said here, even works with ASP.NET because ASP.NET anonymous users can't write to the event log. But you can write to the event log with this trace listener. They did some magic. I don't know what they did, but it works. Um, the default trace listener writes to uh, the debug window, um, usually, if you don't turn it off. Um, the console trace listener writes to our awesome console window. Uh, the delimited writes to a delimited uh, text file. And then we have the XML trace listener uh, writes to an XML file. So the configuration is done uh, via code. Uh, which, if you want to, I don't really prefer that because it's not, it's not easily changed. Um, I prefer the application config file, so you can write this in your web config or your app config. Uh, you can turn off and on trace listeners at, at will. You just go into your web config and turn them on and off. It's very easy. Um, if you do it in code, it's probably a little easier. You can set trace levels, meaning what you actually want to trace. And you can even set filters, as I'll show you in my email trace listener, that I don't want every freaking trace to be emailed to me, right? I only want critical um, events emailed to my development team, and that's what I set up in my email trace listener. So it's very easy to set that up. So here's an example. So under system diagnostics, I'll use my laser pointer. Under system diagnostics, uh, we set up a default source, and then the big thing there is listeners. So we're adding a file log listener. So we're going to write to a file log, and then uh, we have a default switch. But the big thing down is down towards the bottom is we have um, shared listeners, add um, file log, and then we have to type out the, um, the full uh, namespace to, where the, uh, to the class where the uh, file log trace listener is. And we also have to type um, the actual um, um, file where the uh, trace listener is and the version number, all that kind of stuff. And the, and the initialized data, uh, it really should probably be a file name, I think. That's usually where you output, where you put the, the file name for these uh, file log trace listeners. And that's where it'll <coughs> output to. So that's all there is for the configuration. It's really easy. I'll show you when we go into some of the other custom stuff. But to actually just turn these off in a configuration file, you just remark out the add name file log, and it will turn it off. That's all you have to do. And then unremark it, and it will turn it back on. So it depends on what you do. At, at work, we leave them on all the time. So let me show you a, a demo of uh, some trace code. Um, 
and the running the code and then the output of the .NET trace listeners. But here's where I'm actually writing um, like an information entry. So I just do log dot write entry um, test of log entry and I'm setting it to information and that's actually the ID and um, that's it. So that'll write to all the listeners um, that are there. And then here's I'm writing an exception, write exception. I'm just creating a new exception right here, setting it to error. I'm also setting as the uh, message uh, my assembly name and I'm just setting ID to 444. So that's it. That's all you have to do um, to write to the trace listeners. And in this, in this demo, I have two uh, trace listeners set up. I'm not going to show the event log because it will take too long to get there. But I, uh, I have the XML log set up and I have the event log set up. So I'm going to run this and I'll show you the XML. I'm going to write my exceptions. They're written. I just have to refresh. Here's my uh, file right here. Here's the XML right here. So you can see here's the event ID, type, time created, source, and uh, where's computer name. Where's my text I went in? Where's the exception? Oh, here's the test of logging exception down here. So that's the XML trace listener that comes with .NET. And that's it. As you can see, it works pretty easy, pretty fast. Um, and it's, it's pretty easy to set up in your code. Any questions? So let's talk about um, custom trace listeners. So all the, the trace listeners are all, um, you know, you can um, inherit them and add functionality if you want. Or create your own from the base trace listener class. So create your own listeners uh, to enhance the current listeners if you want. Or just inherit trace listener and totally create a brand new one. There's some methods you need to override. Um, I'm not going to get into the code, uh, get my code. I have all the code here for you to take away. Those of you who are interested, I have the code here for you today. Um, there's some methods you need to override um, called write, write line, um, trace event, writes trace information, message, and also trace data. This is where the big blobs of data come across like the um, um, uh, exception objects. There's also another um, method to override. I'll show you when I get into my custom uh, trace listeners uh, called get supported attributes. Um, what this does is allows you to add extra properties to that configuration file and then extract them out of the configuration file using the get supported attributes. And you'll see that when I show you my custom uh, uh, trace listeners. And then you just add, you know, the setup of these to your configuration file, and uh, they work. Um, the hardest part, really, is uh, the overriding of the trace data, um, write and write line and trace event. That's where most of your code goes to write to whatever source you're writing to. So, you know, the reason I started going down the road of redoing the trace listeners is the first one I did actually was the uh, XML writer trace listener. And these are the reasons. If, if you noticed, I don't know if you guys noticed when I showed you the XML, uh, it does not write well-formed XML. Yeah. So my boss kept bringing it up in XML Spy going, it's not well-formed and XML Spy is showing it all goofy. You know? And if you try to bring it up in IE to look at it, it looks all hokey i.e. just goes, I don't know what this is. The other problem is um, the XML uh, writer creates one big honking huge file, uh, which is okay unless you forget to leave it on. Because one time uh, somebody called me from Austin in my last job and said, Dave, the application's running really slow. And I got on it, it was running really slow, and I I said, I, you know, I haven't changed anything in months, you know. And I went onto the server, and that XML file was huge. And I don't know what it does underneath the covers. I don't know if it loads it up every time it sticks something in there. But something was going on. And as soon as I turned, I forgot to turn off the XML trace listener, 
after I was done debugging something. As soon as I turned it off, sped right up. Yeah. Also, if you use this with this, in this uh, scenario I just told you, this was a, a web application. If you use it with ASP.NET, it stays locked. Meaning, you can't move it, you can't delete it, you can't back it up, you can't do anything as long as IAS is running. Kind of a problem. Also, the latest traces won't be in the file if you go to look at it because it has flushing issues. So this was the first one I redid. Sorry, this is totally unusable. The .NET one is totally unusable to me. And I'm assuming the other file-based listeners suffer from the same issue. Flushing, locking, all that kind of stuff. So I, I haven't used the other ones. I only use XML because I like XML because then hopefully down the road I could suck it into a database or something like that. But Let's talk about my, um, my open source project, .nettips.utility. Uh, my, my, my listeners I wrote in .nettips.utility taking exception and event logging to the extreme. This is my open source assembly which is up on CodePlex. The current version is, that I'm showing you here tonight is not up there yet. I have it here for you so you get to see it before anybody else. Aren't you lucky? The current version requires 3.5. Sorry, if you're on, still on 2.0, I'm sorry. It still might work but you still have to have 3.5 uh, framework. It fixes and enhances the .NET listeners, adds new trace listeners, and as you'll see, um, you saw the deep, some of the um, output information that was in the XML file. As you're going to see, uh, my uh, listeners output a ton more debugging information. And you can also add custom information during runtime. And this is all done via a class that I wrote called the log entry class. And this class is automatically used when logging exceptions. You can use it to log anything you want but it's automatically used when you log exceptions. I have some methods, as you'll see, where you just send in an exception, but underneath the covers, I'm actually wrapping that exception inside of my log entry class because the log entry class automatically adds thread process information, domain information, application information, user information, computer information, auto logs the class and method where the exception happened, so you don't have to and much more. It also has a custom information collection where you can log anything you want into a collection uh, which is really easy to get out later. Also has additional properties like category. It has a really, it has a ID as a GUID so it's really easy to, um, to identify a specific uh, entry. Uh, user or machine name severity because exceptions don't have severities. Um, this does source and source version, has tons of information. I don't think I even have everything up here. So you'll see some of it when I show you the XML files. So let's talk about the enhanced listeners. So the first enhanced listener is uh, the event log trace listener, um, which I just enhanced to work with my log entry class. So there's not a lot of exciting things there because I needed to output all that ex extra information into the event log. So I just had to enhance that to use my log entry class. Um, the next big one, of course, the first one I did really was the XML trace listener fixes all the issues with the .NET implementation, which basically I rewrote the whole thing. I don't even use the XML trace listener because it doesn't work. So it, it writes well-formed XML, so you can bring it up in XML Spy or um, Firefox like I'm going to show you here in a second. It does not lock the file ever. Creates a new file for each day and automatically deletes old files. And that's, of course, configurable, as you'll see right there. So here's, a, here's one from one of our production servers. I don't know if my company likes me showing this, but uh, as you can see right there, I have five backups and the current one going. So it automatically keeps five backups and, uh, and always has a new one for the current day. So basically the first time something comes through after midnight creates a new file. Um, show you what the XML looks like. Got to go to Firefox. The only thing in the Mac that looks at XML any good. 
So here's what the actual XML file looks like um, from the output of my XML trace listener. Um, up here at the top is uh, uh, mostly uh, stuff actually from um, the normal um, trace uh, um, listener writing, except I added uh, UTC time here. And uh, well, I, in the beginning I had UTT, UTC time because that's what I want to log, but then everybody in QA complained. So then I put system time there so they could see local time. And, but the real, the real information is right here under um, trace data. And this is um, my custom information. This is just logging a start event of our web application, so that's not very exciting. So let's look at um, uh, an actual exception here. So here we have the ID, which is my GUID, um, the timestamp, severity. Um, we have categories, um, the user, the actual message. And then I have a collection of error messages, which the first one is always the um, original error message, and then all the other ones are the inner um, exception messages. So you can see here we have uh, some binary data will be truncated, and here's the whole me here's the error message with all the track stack trace um, information, and then here's all that extra information I told you about that I log. Um, if I can get it, I log application information like. Um, uh, machine name, source, and then here's all the additional information I log, um, like CLR version, map memory, free memory, OS name, OS version, uh, total physical memory, calling assembly, calling method, uh, calling type, uh, process name, all that kind of stuff. So let me find another one down here. Uh, so here's another one, starting a transaction on the provider connection. So. Oh, here's one with an inner exception. So here's the message, and here's an inner exception message. Uh, so it just goes down from there. I just picked some good ones out from one of our server logs. Twenty questions? Yeah, why log in the server? You already know what server you're in, don't you? No. Because I'm, I'm not sure. I have to log this well, because... I mean, if you have a web farm, you're all going to be about the same. Yeah, but... Who knows what I'm using this XML file for? I could transport this XML file to a central location, then suck it up into a database. You know, so just because I'm looking at this, or how about if I move this to my machine? No, I understand machine. Data. I just didn't understand. Like, you know, I log everything I possibly can. <laughs> Believe me, everything. This stuff helps us. We even are, are logging now. I, I couldn't put it in here, but we're even logging if it's like a SQL error. We're actually putting in the SQL strings too. So we can see the actual SQL string that caused the error. Yeah. So, any questions about the XML? Yeah, I've I've seen my database grow a hundred thousand records in one day. So, yeah, it really depends what you want to log and where you log it. And I do have automatic uh, um, deleting in here too. So. Is there a file system you can keep up with something like that? Sure. If you have a big enough file system, I, I would really recommend uh, something else I'm going to show you soon. I wouldn't recommend using this for that. So that's XML trace listener. Um, I also have the email trace listener, which I'll show you when we get uh, to another demo. Uh, trace events uh, to an SMTP server. Um, this is important, like I said, um, I uh, everything, we use this for any critical um, exception happen, happening. And for what I denote as critical is that if an exception gets to basically the global exception handling in, in .NET, in a Win, Win app or an ASP.NET app, if an exception gets that far, it's critical. And that gets emailed uh, through the email trace listener to our entire development department. And my last job uh, when we use this uh, that actually, I logged that actually into our bug tracking system because I said if that gets that far, we have to go look at it and fix it. So you could use it for that too, no problem. Um, the web service trace listener sends trace events to a web service method, which in my centralized error logging system, what I'm going to show you here in a sec, uh, goes into a database. And that's really what you would want to use. So that's what that's made for. You could use it to do whatever you want, but that's what I'm using it for, 
it goes into it goes through a web service into a back-end database so and then I've already written though I don't have it um, fully tested at work yet um, one of you know one of the things about you know you know I told you I look at these uh, log files uh, every day on our production servers servers and I watch the QA people looking at it, the, the logs too because they usually look at them when something goes wrong before they call one of us or write up a bug uh, a bug uh, ticket or whatever but I said well you know why should they be going and futzing around with those logs right so I said why don't I write something they can look at it right in there right away so I've already written a TCP trace listener that you basically attach it to a machine and you see all the you see all the events happening live. It's really neat. And I wrote a program, you know, that you can use to watch them. So it's pretty cool. So that's not in my assembly yet until I test it at work. So um, to log these with my system, you actually use a class called uh, LogWriter. Um, this is what you use for logging um, exceptions, events, and the log entry class itself. Um, and I already talked about logging exception, um, actually uses the log entry under the hood. Um, it, this, all mat, this writes to the correct log collection based on the type of application. Since I'm doing things kind of manually um, in the back end, uh, I, I, I basically figure out if you're basically a Win app or, an a, or a web app, and I log to the correct logs um, accordingly. Um, also, uh, once, you, once, you, once it gets to the actual logging part, it goes multi-threaded. So it doesn't slow down your program. Okay? Right before it gets sent to the logs, it goes multi-threaded. Um, the methods are write entry, um, write exception, and I'm going to show you a demo. This is what... Um, this is what mine looked like. So here I'm logging an event. I'm using my log writer class. I have static methods on it. And uh, the first one, just logging, logging an event. I'm writing an event. There I'm formatting event test now. Uh, trace event type information, that's it. That's all you gotta do if you're just writing a normal event like application started, something like that. Very easy. Writing exception. Here I'm creating an exception because I don't have one. This right here is my automatic additional information that I can send in like you know, this is the method name or anything else you want to send in. Um, this right here, as you'll see in the demo, is uh, an actual pop-up. So one of the things we do usually uh, sometimes when we trap an exception, then we give a use user some kind of message, right? Hey, dummy, you put an apostrophe in your name. You shouldn't do that, right? Uh, so instead of doing two calls, I decided to wrap that up. And that's this last uh, parameter here and you can put in a message for the user. And this will work. Uh, it will automatically detect if you're a Win app or a web app and do the appropriate thing. So it'll either spit out a message box or spit out JavaScript, depending what kind of app you are. So it works really cool. The next one is kind of going the long route and using the actual log entry class. And here I'm setting my, uh, my message. I'm setting what type it is. I'm setting category. And um, I'll, I'll talk a little bit in a, in a second why uh, category is important. Um, the source, the title, and some additional information and additional information is, um, collection that we have. So here I'm setting up the virtual memory, and this is the key. And, um, and here's just an exception. I won't go through all that, but this is basically the same thing through exception. So the reason I want to tell you about category, because category we actually use in our database for searching. Because we needed a category for a couple of things, not only for searching in our database. So anyway, we use category because we actually use this mechanism. Because this mechanism was already in place to basically handle, um, you know, events and exception logging, right? So they came to me, you know, uh, during the, you know, re release cycle for um, version one of our new product. They said, well, Dave, you know, we need a way to capture um, our users' system information. So we want a way so every time they log in, we want to know everything about their system. I go, okay. And then they said, well, you know, we want a way so that every time they print a report, 
We want to know what report they printed. I said, okay. So I said, okay, great. You know, we have, I already have this logging mechanism. So we added different categories, which of course in my, aren't in my assembly, right? We use this category. So we have a category called report count. We have a category called um, client info and stuff like that. And we use that to, you know, suck that information out of the database and do roll up information in the back end. Okay, so that's why we have a category in there. So let me show you this real quick. I want to go to show you the first one. And you can see the pop-up. The pop-up happened right there. So just to prove to you, it also works in the web. Exact same code, really no changes. Here's my little pop-up, something really bad happened. Works, no problems. So let me show you the config really quick and how this is configured down here. So I have my event log. Uh, my event log uh, is set up in there. I have my XML writer, the same names because these names really don't mean anything. I also have my web service uh, writer in here too. So, but down here, I'm using my .NET tips, utility, logging, XML trace listener, and so on. And you can see I have some extra properties in here like backup files, true, days to keep files, two days. Um, down here in my email log, I have you know the to address, the from address, SNTP, all that kind of stuff. And here's my filter. Remember I told you the filter I use on my email log? I mean my email trace listener. So here I set up a filter that basically says um, the event type has to be critical before this trace listener is even going to do anything. Okay. And this is highly configurable. Here's the web service one. I'm setting up the um, service path, service method, service name. That's all that needs to work. So really easy to set up. Let's talk about my centralized error logging, my centralized logging system, which I've had in companies almost since I've been doing .NET. So like I said before, the problem now with, uh, except for the web service trace listener, which you just saw, which is what this is based off of, um, if you're using the file logging methods or the event logging methods, they're all running, each server is logging to a machine. So it's kind of a pain to go to each server and look up what's going on, right? And um, like I do every morning, I have to go to each server and look at the XML logs, right? Um, because we don't have this set up as cool as this. And of course, there's no searching or anything like that. I have to go through the logs, you know, scan up and down the logs or scan up and down the event logs. It's hard to find things. So. A better way is just to do a centralized logging system where we have a client or server because this actually works on our client uh, from our client machines that are in who knows where and logs back to our centralized uh, data server to our centralized where all our machines are here in San Diego. So we have a client server, um, uses the web service trace listener, logs into our um, web service here in San Diego writes to um, SQL Server database, and basically we just view it through um, on the ASP.NET web page. And that's it. It's really easy, essentially. The program just basically consists of a web service and a web page, and uh, I think that's about it. Oh, and some uh, entity framework stuff. So here's my web page. You can see the, the events we were just doing are logged in on here. And it shows my last events. And um, I can go and look by server. So here's my server at work. And it'll show me my, my uh, exceptions from my server at work. Um, show me um, uh, by severity. And all these drop downs are based on what's actually in the database. They're not hard coded, of course. Always show me categories, too, so I can show that. And um, I can actually search for things like uh, web. There's all my web exceptions. If I want to look at one, I just select on it, and it'll show me all the information down here, like the error message, all that additional info information down here. And that's it. Oh, it'll also show you after a minute, it'll start showing you uh, how many total entries you have and how many of each type you have up here. So that's it. On 
Well, we have a work that's a little different. It's actually based on customer. And uh, so it doesn't, it's not a, I can't search through everything like I can here. So, so my, my original concept for this actually came, I actually came up with this concept back in the late 90s because I worked at a company, you know, a web company where we had a web farm, we have 15 servers. And every time something happened, you know, our internal people had to go to 15 servers and try to figure out where it was happening. Right, so that's where my original concept came up from, and but I didn't start writing this till like version one of version beta of .NET. You guys remember that XML data that I was writing to the file? Well, that's exactly what gets sent across the web service. That exact data, and all I do is reserialize that back back up into my log entry class, and write it to the database, and I'm all done. And like I said, our clients save their data to this. So actually, the way it works from our client shops is that they aren't hitting this every time they do an exception. So what happens is that all of their exceptions are logged locally on their servers. And then once a night, they get farmed up. Or we can set it off whenever we want. But they get farmed up. Well, not once a night, but whenever our scheduler is set up to do it. They get farmed up to our server. Use trace listeners, as you can see, they're pretty easy to use. They're really easy to, uh, um, to customize. You can also look into the enterprise library if you want. Um, they have a really good logging um, system. Someone else talked about Log4Net. So there's some more stuff about me. I have the code here for those guys. I don't have one for everybody, so if you're interested in the system, I have the code here for you. Um, also, if you take it, I appreciate like your business card or your email address on this pad here. And uh, we'll take a 10-minute break while we set up for the next speaker. Enjoy the sounds.